first Sunday of August. We're still traveling this month and I'm excited that you are joining with us. This morning we will be sharing in the Sacrament of Communion, so if you haven't brought bread and cup with you, there is still time to head out to the kitchen and get supplies. I am sure that you are looking forward to the day when you will be back in the sanctuary and you can sing and share communion in community once again. That day is getting closer and the first step begins at the end of this month because on the 29th, of August, we will open the doors to Appleby United and welcome you to worship in the sanctuary once more. We'll give you more details as the month unfolds. This morning, we light our Christ candle for our neighbors here on this side of the bridge and in the United States on the other side, our neighbors and our friends here and there. For more than 30 years, the United Church and Indigenous peoples have been on the journey towards mutuality, respect, and equity, towards reconciliation, towards justice. At Appleby United Church, we endeavor to do our part, firstly, by acknowledging at the beginning of our services those who lived on and cared for this land long before our ancestors arrived. Acknowledge that the land on which we gather is the traditional territory of the Haudenosaunee and the Anishinaabe First Peoples, covered by the Fort Albany Treaty of 1701. With respect for their history, their spirituality, and their culture, we give thanks for God's gift of gathering in this space on this land. Aho. Come into this electronically connected space from couch or office, from comfy recliners or favorite rocking chairs, from kitchens or bedrooms or basements. The risen Christ welcomes us all. Come unshaven or well quaffed, dressed up or in jammies, eating brunch or sipping coffee. Though separated by distance, come as one to worship, united in faith. Our first hymn this morning is found in Voices United at number 703, In the Bulb There is a Flower. i 
Good morning. My name is Dave McKenzie. And my name is Chris McKenzie. And we are here on the shores of Jack Lake in the beautiful Kawarthas. Let's start the morning with an opening prayer. Let us pray. When we have done all we can to make peace and seek justice for all, we can continue to pray with our hearts and our words. When we have done all we can to feed those who are hungry and provide shelter for those who are homeless, we can continue to pray with our hearts and our actions. We who recognize the Spirit in all can continue to follow Jesus. We can surround our community and our world in prayer, O God, and when we act no longer, we can continue to pray, for your Spirit never leaves us. Amen. The picture behind me is taken at Rideau Hill Camp, the jewel, to me anyway, of what used to be Seaway Valley Presbytery, where I served as Minister of Christian Development in the late 90s. The picture, though, was taken much earlier, and as I told you in this week's email, this was the last year I went as a camper, and they asked if you could spot me. Well, there is the 15-year-old me, right beside me, taller than most of my counselors. I loved camp as a camper, a counselor, the mother of campers, and then as the summer chaplain. And as you may have noticed in Melissa's drawing in the email, the bearer of treats and goodies. A sense of peace and calmness always came over me when I drove through those gates. God's presence felt in the wind off the river and through the willow trees. I enjoyed my drive through the countryside this week. From Johnstown on the St. Lawrence at one end of the five counties, Grenville, Dundas, Stormont, Glengarry, and Prescott, to Hawkesbury on the Ottawa at the far end, and then back to Merrickville and Kempville on the Rideau. It was a long and winding road filled with lots of memories, ministry shared, and kindnesses received. This long and winding road leads through the existing churches in what was once Seaway Valley Presbytery. It stretches through five original counties, Grenville, Dundas, Stormont, Glengarry, and Prescott. It is bordered by three major rivers, the St. Lawrence, the Ottawa, and the Rideau. It is made up of lots of productive farmland growing crops like soybeans, grains, and corn as well as a new crop, windmill turbines. I grew up here as well as serving in ministry here when my girls were in their late teens and then off to university and college. There is a rich heritage here, and if you check out some of the names, you will see connections, especially to Scotland, in the eastern portions. In fact, the bagpipes will be playing, and the lassies and laddies will be dancing this weekend in Maxville at the Glengarry Highland Games. There are lots of small towns and small town churches as well as larger centers, with Cornwall being the biggest. There are bridges to the United States and a border with Quebec on, four, on Highway 401, as well as a bridge and ferries to Quebec as well. The back roads beckon and meander through fields with balers finishing off freshly cut hay and vegetable gardens and lush flower gardens surrounding every country home. I enjoyed the drive and the memories of time spent in each of these churches, visiting church schools, UCW events, youth group meetings, and leading in worship. 
The people here are friendly and welcoming and love to bend your ear about their little part of the world. Ministry is rich here as well as they look for creative ways to reach out to the wider world and help where they can. These are salt of the earth folks with compassion and concern for others. Definitely clothed in the wardrobe we have been talking about. This reading is taken from Jeremiah 1, verses 4 to 10, from the Good News Translation. It is entitled, The Call of Jeremiah. The Lord said to me, I chose you before I gave you life, and before you were born I selected you to be a prophet to the nations. I answered, Sovereign Lord, I don't know how to speak. I am too young. But the Lord said to me, Do not say that you are too young, but go to the people I send you to, and tell them everything I command you to say. Do not be afraid of them, for I will be with you to protect you. I, the Lord, have spoken. Then the Lord reached out, touched my lips, and said to me, Listen, I am giving you the words you must speak. Today I give you authority over nations and kingdoms to uproot and to pull down, to destroy and to overthrow, to build and to plant. Our second reading this morning is from Luke chapter 13, verses 10 to 17. And I too will be reading from the Good News Translation. Jesus heals a crippled woman on the Sabbath. One Sabbath, Jesus was teaching in a synagogue. A woman there had an evil spirit that had kept her sick for 18 years. She was bent over and could not straighten up at all. When Jesus saw her, he called out to her, Woman, you are free from your sickness. He placed his hands on her, and at once she straightened herself up and praised God. The official of the synagogue was angry that Jesus had healed on the Sabbath. So he spoke up and he said to the people, There are six days in which we should work. So come during those days and be healed, but not on the Sabbath. The Lord answered him, You hypocrites! Any one of you would untie your ox or your donkey from the stall and take it out to give it water on the Sabbath. Now here it is, this descendant of Abraham, whom Satan has kept in bonds for eighteen years. Should she not be released on the Sabbath? His answer made his enemies ashamed of themselves, while the people rejoiced all over the wonderful things that he did. Here ends the lesson. Thanks be to God. Our reflection this morning is entitled, Called to Kindness. So, chosen by God for this new life of love, dress in the wardrobe God picked out for you. Compassion, kindness, humility, quiet strength, discipline. Be even-tempered, content with second place, quick to forgive an offense. Forgive as quickly and completely as the master forgave you. And regardless of what else you put on, wear love. It's your basic, all-purpose garment. Never be without it. Let the peace of Christ keep you in tune with each other, in step with each other. None of this going off and doing your own thing. And cultivate thankfulness. Let the word of Christ, the message, have the run of the house. Give it plenty of room in your lives. Instruct and direct one another using good common sense. And sing. Sing your hearts out to God. Let every detail in your lives, words, actions, whatever, be done in the name of the Master Jesus, thanking God the Father every step of the way. So, today we finish putting together our capsule wardrobe as we add a stool to our basic black dress of humility, the hard hat and work boots of compassion, Pearls, an apron of mindfulness, and a prayer shawl of quiet strength. Today's stole is a reminder of kindness. 
and I am very proud of these two stoles. The green one and the red one that are shown here were made for me by the children of Canada United Church, Church School when I moved from ministry in their midst into supply ministry. They served a very practical purpose because I needed a place to put my battery pack when I was leading worship. The kids were quite creative with the red one. I feel a little like one of the British pearly kings and queens when I wear it because it's adorned with a lot of buttons. The stoles were practical, but also a weekly reminder that the children that I had spent six years with each and every week were giving me a big hug each Sunday as I put the stole on and reminding me that I was being sent into the service with love. They also knew that the stole represented the change in my ministry because as the church's supply minister, I would be leading weekly worship and presiding over the sacraments of baptism and communion. But for me, the stoles represented a gift of kindness. Church garb is a tricky thing. Who gets to wear the stiff white tab collar? Who wears the alb or gown in worship? Who wears the stole? Why do some ministers prefer to be much more casual and wear a suit and tie on Sunday or even more comfy clothes in the summer? I did not look it up because in the grand scheme of things, I personally don't think it's that important. What is important to me is the call to ministry, not the trappings. We are all called to ministry. We are called to minister in Jesus' name to all those we meet, whatever their circumstances. Big responsibility. But it does not need to be overwhelming or daunting. And it is not large and grand acts that God is calling us to do, but rather those simple everyday things that lift up someone else, random acts of kindness. Regardless of who we are or what we do in the church, our faith calls us to kindness. In order to follow that call, we need the rest of the garb that we have already put on, our capsule wardrobe. We need humility, compassion, mindfulness, and quiet strength. We, knew, we need to know that the power to do good in the world is not ours alone, but rather God-given. We need to remember to reach out to others thoughtfully, doing no harm, giving a hand up rather than a hand out. We need to be present in the moment, mindful of the needs of those around us right now, and we need to remember to always include God in all of this through regular prayer. My strength comes from the Lord. A couple of years ago, before I left Children and Youth Ministry, the curriculum that I wrote for Kids Zone in Canada centered around being called. Each child wore a name badge that we created together at the first of the year. They would have their picture taken, our version of school photos, to be added along with their first name. We were often creative with picture taking. One year, we set at a dress box of hats and glasses, scarves and the like, and the pictures were amazing. The year that our class material was about being called, they all made a sign to indicate what they were being called to. Here are some of the answers that were written after much thought. Be beautiful. Be motivated. Be helpful. Be fair. Be truthful. Be compassionate. Be peaceful, be thankful, be daring, be happy, be honest, be brave, be loving, be positive, be adventurous, be funny, be smart, be kind. Even as children, we can recognize that God calls us by our name and asks us to be ourselves, our best self. So much of what God is calling us to be can be found in scripture. In Jeremiah, we hear God say that even before we were shaped in the womb, God knew us, knew all about us, that before we were born, God had a holy plan for us. God then reassured Jeremiah that even when he was afraid, he wasn't alone, that God would be with him. I find words for you here at Appleby in the last part of this passage, where God says that you will not be alone as you take a part and start over, building and planting, because that is what you are doing. Not to downplay the pulling up and tearing down part, because I am sure that over the last couple of years, getting ready for Alan's retirement and then finding your way through a pandemic, 
Your transition to today may have felt very much like that. But you are on the brink of something new, something that God is calling you to be, calling you to do. And I believe that if you do that with kindness, with humility, with compassion, mindful of whose you are and relying on the quiet strength of prayer, amazing things lie just beyond the horizon. Much of what God calls us to be and do can also be found and reinforced in the music that we sing on Sunday morning. With Christine away this week and next, I sat down to pick hymns for the services that would fit with scripture, prayer, and reflection. This is an important part of crafting worship because singing our faith, hearing powerful words set to music, plays an integral part in how we spend our time with God and each other on Sunday morning. Our first hymn this morning in the bulb, I think, helps us reflect on what our calls might look like. In the bulb, there is a flower, in the seed, an apple tree. In cocoons, a hidden promise, butterflies will soon be free. In the cold and snow of winter, there's a spring that waits to be, unrevealed until its season, something God alone can see. Who knows what flower will bloom here at Appleby, what hidden promise will soon break free if you're open to where God is calling you to. There's a song in every silence, seeking work and melody. There's a dawn in every darkness, bringing hope to you and me. From the past will come the future, what it holds a mystery, unrevealed until its season, something God alone can see. You are being called to continue so much of what you have already started and do so well, for you are a kind and compassionate congregation. I see it week after week. But there is so much more that lies ahead, and I know that wherever God's call takes you individually and as a congregation, you will be clothed in all that it will take to get you there. In our gospel passage this morning, Jesus heals a woman on the Sabbath. Something that as a faithful Jew, he knew was against the teachings of the temple, but he does it anyway. He reaches out to the woman with kindness and compassion and heals her. He gives us an example of what we too are being called to be at our core, for we are called to be kind to one another. It's so easy to get caught up in all that we have to get done, in all that is expected of us, that we can forget who and whose we are. As Dan Damon sings in the hymn that we will sing at the end of our service, God calls us by our name for we are God's. We are gifted by God and asked to shine for Jesus, gifted, called, and chosen, God's own. This is pretty powerful stuff. It's also a tall request, daunting in fact. Not only is God asking us to respond to our own personal call to be all that we can be, God is also asking us, calling us, to offer all that we have learned about God to others. I have given you my spirit as a sign. With my wonder in your soul, make my wounded children whole. Go and tell my precious people they are mine. I sit on the board of the hospice in Kemphill and have had some amazing experiences dealing with folks there. In June, a couple of years ago, I was invited to present to an evening group of caregivers where they might find meaning and hope in the terminal illness of those they cared for. This would be a secular group, I was told, so I should downplay the faith angle. That was more than difficult. It became impossible. I needed to be myself, to be authentic, so I simply told them my story and where I found meaning and hope, and then invited them to share where they did. It turned out to be a wonderful evening with some great sharing about family and friends, and yes, faith. I was invited back to share with clients on a Thursday morning at day hospice. And if I thought the first time was daunting, this time was so much more. How was I ever going to be able to talk to these folks gathered who found themselves in various stages of life-ending illnesses? I did what I do each week here. I wrote a reflection. But on that Thursday morning, I was able to do what we aren't able to do here on a Sunday morning, but what I think will become more and more a part of church gatherings in the future. I was simply able to talk from my heart, ask questions that allowed the group to answer from theirs, and then get out of the way and let the spirit move through the midst. 
God knows us by name and knows our gifts and calls us to use those gifts for the good of others. I feel privileged since retiring from children and youth ministry to have been called into supply ministry, to have been asked to craft and lead worship alongside talented musicians like your Christine and to preside over the sacraments. When I put on one of these stoles that means so much to me, I feel God's call. When I lead you through communion this morning and together we remember the life, death and resurrection of Jesus, I will feel God's call as I know you will, for God is calling us always, calling us to dress in the wardrobe laid out for us, calling us to be even tempered, quick to forgive, to cultivate thankfulness, to use our common sense in love as we sing our hearts out to God, to let every detail of our lives, words, actions, whatever, be done in the name of Jesus, for we are called to show compassion, humility, mindfulness, quiet strength, and kindness. As we have been loved, so may we love others. As we have been fed, so may we feed others. As we have received from God's hands blessing beyond measure, may we also generously share with one another and with God's world through our offerings. Let us pray. Creator God, take and use these gifts of our hands and the gifts of our hearts. Help us wait in the knowledge that your Holy Spirit will guide us to use them wisely in your service. Amen. God's love is poured out for all people, and the Lord's table is a welcoming place for everyone, member or visitor, believer or seeker. Today, as we prepare to share in this very special meal, imagine yourself gathered by the water, picnics spread out before you, and those closest to you gathered around. Do you feel at peace? Do you feel God coming close as you prepare to take part in this sacrament as old as the very beginnings of our Christian faith? And so we begin. May God be with you as you lift up your hearts and give God thanks. We give you thanks, O God, that you have created all things and invited all things into relationship with each other. You have placed us in the world and called us into relationship with it. From the earliest days, we have been in the world in communities. At times, we have turned away from each other. We have turned away from the earth. At times, we have sought dominion over each other. We have sought dominion over the earth. You have sent prophets and teachers to call us back to right relationship with you, with each other, with all of creation. Even when we turn away again and again and again, your love calls us back to new life. When the time was right, Jesus was born. He lived his life as a human being, one of us. He laughed. He cried. He loved. Jesus told stories to help us learn. He told the story of the Good Samaritan to teach us about being in right relationship with our neighbors, to teach us about who our neighbors are, people of every land and race, people of every belief and faith. Neighbors in all the times and all the seasons of our lives. On the night before fear and anger, power and indifference put him to his death, he sat for a meal with his neighbors, people he loved with all his heart, mind and soul. He took some bread, blessed and broke it saying, take this and eat it. Whenever you do, remember me. Later, he took a cup of wine and blessed it, saying, take this and drink it. This is my new covenant. Remember me. And so we take this bread for the journey and we eat. And as you share in the cup, remember that this is the drink for the way.
So as his friends and neighbors, as his disciples, we remember. We remember his teachings. We remember his death. We celebrate his resurrection and wait with hope for his coming again. Fill us with your spirit, one in Christ and one in love for you and for all people. As in word and deed, we seek your reign of peace and justice on earth. Glory to be to you, eternal God, through Jesus the Christ, in the power of the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us share the words that Jesus used to teach his disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those that trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our last hymn this morning is found in more voices at number 161. I have called you by your name. enjoyed our trip through the eastern five counties through the Seaway Valley with its very rich history. I invite you to do some Google searching this week and find out more about the lost villages and the different forays into power here, including a failed ethanol co-op and a new crop of wind farms. And now going forth, divinely created, we are also called to be creating. We are called by name. Anointed by Christ's love, we are called to be companions to all creation. We are called by name. Inspired by the Spirit, we are called to renewal and repair of the world. We are called by name. Called by love, anointed by love, inspired by love. We go forth into a world with a mission to love and to cherish, to garden and to build, to seek and to sing to dance and to pray. Let us go in faith, in service and in gratitude, knowing that we do not go alone, but that God who is creator, connector and inspirer is with us every step of the way. Amen. John has added one last picture as we head out for coffee. 
This last photo is especially for Sherry Corning, who grew up in Alexandria and went to church here with her family. This is the church on the hill in the far east of Ontario. Thanks for sharing your memories of worship and CGIT and living in Alexandria, Sherry. Have a good week, everyone. See you at coffee. Thank you.